What's up everyone? If you clicked on this video, then you have officially joined my startup journey where I take an idea and turn it into a SaaS and hopefully provide great services to my community like you guys and to other people around the world and also make some money because that is obviously the idea of also creating a software as a service to make some money, but also to provide great services. Now, this video series is not going to be like the ones you have previously seen on YouTube. I'm not going to show you how I get out of bed or what I eat for breakfast or 50 different angles of my beautiful face. This video series is about the raw stuff. It's about the concrete information that are actually really important. All the good things and all the terrible things that are going to go on. Uh, so if you are looking for something like this, if you're looking to really see what it's like to create a SaaS product and to build up a startup that hopefully might be successful, then you should definitely consider subscribing if you're not subscribed to my channel as of yet. Now, to give you more context of what this video series is going to cover, uh, we're going to talk about ideas and how they evolve. Uh, we're going to discuss the decisions I make and why I make those decisions. Uh, we're going to talk about the financial aspects of it, uh, what I spend my money on, how much money I've made. I'm going to be extremely transparent about that. We're going to talk about the technology I use, what stack I use, why I'm using this specific type of technology, why it's going to benefit me. We're going to cover all of that. We're also going to look into the amount of time and effort I put into things. Yes, you will see me copy and paste code from the internet. Yes, you're going to see me ask Uncle Google stupid ass questions of maybe how to filter something out of an array. Even though I'm an experienced web developer, we all do it and we need people to understand that that is normal. You are coming along on this journey to see a dude go through all the hardships, all the successes and just see the real raw reality of building a startup. Now, in today's video, I want to cover three important things. I want to talk about the idea, which I came up with and give you a bit of context on that. Uh, I want to show you what I've already implemented in the UI and the functionality of the code. And I also want to discuss very briefly about the stack that I'm using and why I have decided to use it. So without any further ado, let's discuss the idea. Let me give you some background and uh, enjoy. Now, the idea I have is a platform that allows me and other people to add courses and teach people. It's basically going to be an education platform. Now, I know you may be like, oh, but Philip, you know, there is like Udemy and there's Teachable and there's Coursera and there's all these other platforms that already exist that do the same thing. How are you going to stand out? Well, a lot of the platforms that do offer services where you can create your own course or you can purchase a course and, and learn something, they're built in a way that totally drives money, but it doesn't focus so much on the actual experience of the person who's learning stuff. Yeah, they just offer a platform for uploading your videos and providing a piece of text, but that's where it ends. And with education and learning, especially to code, there is so much more that you can do to really make it an interactive process and really allow people to learn better and understand things. Because a lot of the time with these courses, you watch like six or seven or eight of videos, and then suddenly you realize that what you've watched in the first one, you've already forgotten. And that's kind of the thing that we're going to try and, uh, you know, fix and, and make better and really have people feel how amazing learning can be. The other thing I want to make as part of the platform is uh, a social community of developers, uh, of people that can interact with each other and ask questions. Now, what I hate that we have currently out now is how Stack Overflow and how Reddit, whenever you post a question, no matter how simple it may be, you get criticized on why are you posting this question? This question was asked before. Oh, this is a goddamn duplicate. Delete, delete, block, block. Oh, piss off, you know? And instantly as a, as a new developer, you post your question, you get absolute hate and people criticize you for what the hell have you done? How dare you post a question? And suddenly you feel absolutely hopeless. And I've been in that situation so many times. So I want to create a platform where developers can really ask a simple question and not get criticized over it, but 
all they can do is get help. Who gives a shit if it's a duplicate or not? Like, just relax. It's, it's a question. Let people ask the question and let it be answered and let them move on and continue learning. So that is definitely something that I also want to work on. Now, I'm talking about all of this stuff and it's a lot of work. It really translates to a lot, a lot of effort to create something like this. So the way I want to approach it is I personally can create a course and yes, I will. You'll get two courses from me, uh, one about, you know, uh, really creative web development, CSS and, and animations, uh, the other one about like FreeJS and GSAP Blender and doing all that fun stuff. So those are the things I would want to host on there. So essentially, I'll firstly create a platform that allows me to host my own courses and for you guys to be able to purchase them and go through them. And then I'm going to expand to allow external people to register as teachers and add their own courses and gain revenue from that. And then finally expand the platform to also offer a community where we all as teachers and students can interact together to help each other learn, to answer questions and just serve as the most epic uh, developer community on the web. So you guys as a community, you can really help me out. I want you guys to interact with me, to give me criticism so what you think is wrong, to give me feedback, to tell me what you loved. I wanna hear all of it and I want to use the YouTube community to actually discuss all of this stuff. So now from here, I wanna jump in and show you guys what I've built so far, how it works. And as I'm doing that, I'll explain the technology I'm using and why I've decided to use it. And I still haven't picked all of it. It's just the basic stuff because I wanted to jump right into it. So what you see here is my homepage. I know, amazing. Now, a lot of you are probably like, well, Philip, why are you not sticking to the concepts? Why are you not doing mobile first? Why are you creating the UI before any functionality? And bear with me, there's pretty much absolutely no functionality in this at this point. And the answer to that is because I can, why not? People have different ways of doing things. I know there's concepts and there's rules of creating things to make it maybe a little bit easier, but I find myself more motivated when I'm looking at some really sexy UI. So this is exactly uh, my explanation and you can't argue with that. Now, this is the homepage. Now, what have I used to create uh, this application? Well, I've used Next.js. Next.js is a framework for building production applications. Not only a really easy way to manipulate front end and build reusable components, uh, but also it has an integrated backend. You basically have the functionality to trigger API requests and deal with all that backend data in Next.js all in one framework uh, without having to jump in between and start servers and whatnot. Uh, also, it's very logical because, uh, for example, there is structures to the code, if I'll show you really quickly. Uh, for example, uh, if I have my pages, if I create an account or an index or a login page, it will be like slash login and that page will be reflected under that slash path. Uh, so that's a really nice thing. Obviously, if I have my API and then that folder structure relates to that actual uh, URL that I'm going to call. So there is obviously great logic here. And then that front end and back end has this nice separation in Next.js. Obviously, there's so many other benefits, uh, but this is just the overall overall idea of uh, how it works. I have created some components which are reusable. Uh, so you'll see that uh, this whole box here actually stays the same, but the content inside it changes. And that's uh, the way we can actually reuse components. I have this login, doesn't work at all. Uh, you can click forgot your password, takes you to the recover account. As you can see, same kind of box uses the same components, very reusable, very quick to make then we can actually join the journey. And this is where I've implemented some functionality. The idea of joining and creating an account is for it to be fun, is for it to be interactive, and is for it to be a really fast and simple process. So uh, I've already written a lot of the validation for this email. So if I actually create an account, uh, actually let's uh, go with like hello at developerphilip.com and see it's not valid, but now it's going to be valid. It's instant validation. Um, and as soon as you see uh, it being validated, the button actually is enabled. So uh, I want to go with hello at developerphilip.com. Now we can move on to creating the password. Well, of course, uh, I had to be a little bit bougie and I had to create something else. And I think this is a nice visual way to let people know, uh, you know, and, and have fun with creating a password to make sure that it actually is uh, qualified to the actual standards of a secure password. And I'm going to enable the eye, which actually blinks and opens up if you click it. And uh, I'm going to type a password, a uh, password that's 
secure. And as you saw, whenever I typed a lowercase, it highlighted the lowercase. When I went over eight characters, it toggled the eight characters and I'm going to type a capital letter and I'm going to type a special character, character. And as soon as all of these are validated, well, then I can have the next button enabled and I can go to the next step. Here, you know, we can enter the details. Uh, no validation here, developer Philip, uh, Philip and my surname, Grabowski. And if I click next, here is where I'm going to allow people to optionally add a payment method to make purchasing courses much simpler later on, where uh, here it's going to collect uh, the card number, it's going to collect um, the expiry date and that CVC, uh, we can't store that. It's, it's a very bad practice and you should never do that. So whenever they purchase, they'll just enter the CVC and it's going to be a really fast uh, checkout process. For now, we can skip it and look at that. Congratulations, four out of four steps have been completed. And so you know, when you explore, you go onto the account page and it's going to say your name here. None of that is implemented. But if we actually go into MongoDB and I refresh this page, what you will see is that it has actually added a user with the email the hashed password that I've already done, username, name, and surname. Now, let's log out and let's try and create an account again with that same password, or not password, goddamn, email. So, hello at developerphilip.com. Email is already taken. Do you see how fast that was? Now, there is a really cool thing that I did here. Every time, if I open up the inspect panel and uh, if we go into network, I'll just clear this. Every time an at symbol is the last character of this email, what it does is it creates a request to the database and fetches all the emails of the users that start with this hello at phrase, and it could be different. Now, if we look here, if we look at the response, what we can actually see is that, well, this is the only email that's already there. So now when I actually go ahead and type this whole thing out, we can do really fast, uh, developer Philip, validation, whereas if it exists, well, it's already taken and I can't do that. And you know, some might be cheeky and click on the button and be like, oh yeah, uh, I'm gonna be a cheeky boy and I'm gonna take out this disable link and uh, oh yeah, the bottom is gonna be instantly enabled and I can just click next. No, no, you can't. There is absolutely no way you can get to the next stage if you haven't filled out a proper email address. So this is basically all the functionality that I did so far. There's nothing more than that. Uh, now, why have I decided to use MongoDB? Well, it's really fast and it's extremely secure. Uh, so that's the reason why I decided to use Mongo. I also was thinking of using maybe Firebase just for a more like visual and nice kind of view, but Firebase is not as secure as Mongo. And considering I'm going to be storing like, uh, you know, card details, uh, well, you know, it has to be extremely secure. And obviously those card uh, numbers and those uh, expiry dates, they're going to be hashed with a very secure hash. Uh, so absolutely no freaking way, even if you get access to the database, there's, there's no way uh, you're going to be able to break that uh, hash. I really want you guys' feedback on what you think of it so far, uh, any things you didn't like, any things that might complicate, uh, you know, the user process, maybe things I should add, maybe things I didn't consider. Uh, let's have a discussion in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please smash the thumbs up. I hope it doesn't flop. Uh, it's really important it doesn't because I really want this series to continue motivating me. So uh, whenever a video does well, well, I'm going to get a huge boost of motivation and I'm really going to grind at this startup. So again, thank you very much guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next startup video. Bye.